Good morning and welcome to our online service. I'm Chaplain Amy Bauman with For His Glory Ministry, and we're so glad that you're choosing to join us today. We come together every Sunday as a body of believers to worship our Lord, renew our mind, and unify our faith all over the globe. The church coming together and coming alive. Our mission is to feed the world with word and deed. And we're doing that on many different social media platforms right now with encouraging daily devotionals, programs like this, Truth in the Streets, our Tuesday teachings, The Chair. We're also walking alongside those that need Jesus, helping them with food, water, Bibles, ways that they can grow their relationship with the Lord and feel His presence in a real and tangible way. If you would like to partner with Forest Glory Ministry, there are two ways that you can do that. You can securely donate online by going to our website, amybauman.com, and clicking on the donate page. You can also send your gift to For His Glory Ministry, P.O. Box 15, Hamilton, Michigan, 49419. Our prayer today is that you will find this place a place that you belong, that you will believe in God's truth, that it will help you start this next week, and that you will feel the love of Jesus. We are so glad that you're here.
Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. If this is your first time joining us, a very special welcome to you. But if you have been following along over the last couple of weeks, especially, you'll know that God has been kind of taking us on a journey. This month, we looked at several parables where Jesus was explaining to the people, his followers and his disciples, how to live. Parables like the prodigal son, where we asked ourselves, which brother are we? Parables like the seed, the mustard seed, so that we can understand that there is great in the small and that if we have faith as big as a mustard seed, which is only that big, God is able to plant that and grow that faith and, and we can uh, experience the fullness and the, how big God really is. And then last week, we talked about the parable of the wide and the narrow gate and how to be a follower of Jesus, it's going to take effort. It may feel at times that we are paddling upstream when everyone is coming and floating down. And in, in choosing the narrow gate, we are choosing everlasting life. We are choosing not just to focus on this world and living in the flesh, but eternal life and where we will live in the spirit. So today, as I was looking at everything and how God you know, took us on this journey, we can see that God wants to prepare our hearts to understand why we have this book. You know, it's not just to be on our countertops or our coffee tables to look at, and maybe read occasionally, but this book is to navigate us, to point us in the right direction, to be our GPS while we're living in this broken world. We need to have this book and we need to use it to renew our minds. And if you think the world is challenging now, the Bible is very clear that it's going to get harder. And the real truth is that we need to be ready. We need to be secure in who we are and whose we are for the realities of revelation, for the realities of living in the final days, and the realities of this all eventually coming to an end. So today, today we're going to talk about how God is the God of our. We're going to be taking communion together as a body of believers, and we're going to be preparing our hearts for next month. Next month, we're going to be walking through the book of James. There are five weeks in August. There are five chapters in James, and so each week we're going to unpack those verses. We're going to understand God's truth in a better, more clear way to live in this world, and we're going to continue to take this journey with God as he is making the way for us with his truth. But before we get started this morning in today's sermon, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you that we can all come together as a body of believers, Lord, and worship you to hear one truth, to be able to worship you in song and, and praise. And now I ask, Lord, that you will just open up our hearts and our ears for what it is that you have to say to us today that you will anoint me with the Holy Spirit, that I will speak your truth with love, and that we can have a, just a takeaway today, Lord, of, of how you are such a big God and how we can be more like you. We love you and we praise you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So the God of R. Some people might pick, pick up this book, this Bible, and say, I know he's a God of R. He's a God of rules. Because this book is filled with rules on how I should live my life. Others might say, well, this is a God of rituals. Because when we scan through the Old Testament, we can see all kinds of rituals and sacrificing animals and burnt offerings and feasts and festivals. God is a God of rituals. Others might say, well, this is a God of radical ideas. 
I mean, he's telling me that I'm supposed to love my enemies. How do I do that? I'm supposed to believe in something that I can't even see. How do I do that? I'm supposed to believe that he sent his son to die for me 2,000 years ago. How do I believe that? Well, why that might feel like the case, like maybe God is a God of rules and re restrictions and regulations and rituals and a God of radical ideas. I would like you to take this next few moments and I want to encourage you to think about some other R words that actually depict God, that represent God, that give us a clearer picture of who God really is. That he's a God of restoration. If we go back to his original design, which is shalom, perfect peace, nothing missing and nothing broken. We realize that God's original design for this world was perfect. A perfect world where he created that would be filled with love and peace and joy. And there was no division. There was no disease. There was no disunity. He created the world and everything in it and said it was good. That was his original design. But since the fall of man, when sin entered the world, he has done nothing but continue to bring us back to him, to restore us to him, to restore that perfect peace, that shalom, that nothing missing and nothing broken, because he is a God of restoration. I would also encourage you to think of him as a God of not only restoration, but redemption. And part of that restoration process was sending Jesus. And he did that perfectly by orchestrating several generations of broken people, no less, to come together so that Jesus could be born into the world as the Son of Man. He came as the Prince of Peace. He came to restore that peace, that shalom, nothing missing and nothing broken, that brokenness that came on the scene as soon as the enemy, our enemy, the devil, came into the garden and lied to Adam and Eve. Jesus not only walked this earth preaching and teaching and healing, and sharing the good news of the kingdom of God, healing the sick, healing the broken, healing those that were burdened with demons, demon possession, trying to um, let everyone know and see the Father through his eyes, through his actions. He not only did all of that, but he died on a cross, a man without sin, to restore us back to the Father. And not just some of the sin, not just part of the sin, but all of the sin for all mankind, for all ways. Today, tomorrow, and the sin that has not even yet been committed. Nothing trumps this redemption. Let me say that again. Nothing trumps this redemption. And the offerings and the rituals and the sacrifices of the Old Testament, the ones that needed to keep being done in order to forgive sin, cover it up, those are passed away. Those are no longer valid. Because if you think of God as a God of rituals, then you haven't read the New Testament. You haven't fully experienced the redemption of complete forgiveness when Jesus died on the cross for you and for me and for everyone. You see, he's continually restoring, renewing that redemption process. So you, you not only need to, to look at what happened in the Old Testament, 
but also what happened in the New Covenant, the New Testament. So not just the restoration, not just the redemption, but most importantly, I would encourage you to think of him also as a God of relationship. Because that's the main reason he's done everything since the beginning. We are created in his image. We are designed to be with him and in fellowship with him. We have been given dominion and authority to rule this world. And when sin entered the world, when sin came in, God has been working nonstop to restore us back to that original design, to that relationship, to that redemption. And it wasn't just about Jesus dying on the cross, but when he was raised again from the dead, the plans of the enemy were canceled. And now we have the opportunity to choose the richness of everlasting life. He has given us the ability to choose relationship, to choose to have that relationship with them. And we can choose to be renewed. Now, the devil, he thinks that he's God. He likes to think that he's God. He likes to think that he is in control of this world and in control of all of us. And he likes the R words also. But see, he likes to recycle. He likes to recycle the lies and the discouragement and, and tell you that you're not loved, tell you that you're not worthy, tell you that God doesn't really know who you are, doesn't really have plans for you. He likes to recycle the lies and the past regret and the past sin. And he's on a rampage, ramshackling our life with recklessness, giving us religious spirits, encouraging our reluctancy to ever want to do a new thing. He's ripping apart our peace, robbing our joy, and trying to rot away at our very foundation, you know, discouraging us and distracting us away from God's truth. He wants us to listen to the world and the world's views and the world's ideas and the world's truth. And not this, not what God has been doing ever since the beginning. He wants us to be so filled with rage and rejection and resentment and that all we want to do is sit in our homes filled with fear, hating our brothers and our sisters, and not believing who God is and what he's doing. And if we look at the world and we read a newspaper and we watch the news, can you not feel that recycle? Can you not see the lies that people are believing? Can you not see how our brother hates brother and we're stealing and robbing from each other and we're not recognizing who's really hurting and who's really needing? He's a, he's a person of recycle. He's our enemy. And the question today is, are you experiencing that recycle today? Are you experiencing this in your life today? Are you hearing these recycled lies? Is he running rampant in your life? Well, I want to encourage you today as we look at how God is the God of R, that you can also always return. You can always return to the path. You can always return to God and that it's never too late. He is a God of R. He's a God of renewal and redemption. He will reconcile your relationships. He will replenish your joy. He will rebuild your foundation. He will break your chains of addiction and disease and depression. As it says in Ezekiel 36, 26, 
I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Not only when you trust in him and allow him to reconcile your relationships and replenish your joy and rebuild your foundation, but you can also rest in him during these times of uncertainty and not knowing what's coming next and not knowing what, what's going to happen in the future. We can rest in him. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. I'm not sure where you are sitting at in your life today. I'm not sure what you are experiencing in your workplace, in your family, in your health, in, in your day-to-day -day life, in living in this world. But whatever you need this morning, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're waiting for, whatever you're searching for, you need to remember that God has promised us in this word in this truth right here, he's promised us that he will provide. He's promised us that he's trustworthy. He's promised us that he's faithful. And he hasn't given us rules and teachings and guidelines. Like a father that he is, he's given us his truth to help us navigate in this broken world. He hasn't given us rituals, but shows us time and time again how when we draw near to God, He will draw near to us. He also hasn't given us radical ideas, but shows up in our lives in real ways so that we can have a relationship with Him. He's a God of renewal and redemption and restoration. He's a God who loves us so much that he sent his one and only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And my friends, if this is you today, if you are struggling and you need the redemptive work of Jesus Christ in your life, to renew you and restore you and re-equip you for the journey that you are traveling. If you're ready, it's time to take that next step. It's time to return. It's time to allow God to do a work in your life. Not recycle, not recycle lies and your past mistakes and the things that you have chosen wrong, but to allow God to do a new work in you. The redemptive body of Jesus Christ in your life, filling you, equipping you, allowing you to partner with him, walk with him as you take these next steps and to replace your heart of stone with a heart of flesh. Let him continue to do that redemptive work in you that started with the cross itself. And to do that, to do that, we're going to remember. We're going to allow the Lord to remind us today of what he did on the cross for not just your sin, not just my sin, but for all of our sin, when we repent and receive. So we're going to enter into a time of communion right now. So if you have your elements with you, you're going to want to get those ready. But before we 
we do that before we partake in communion today. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are a God of the R. I thank you for the redemptive work that Jesus did on the cross and that in you we are new creations. I thank you that you want to be in relationship with us, that you want to walk alongside of us, that you want us to call you Abba, Father. I thank you that your promises are true and that we can always return to you, that your mercies are new each morning. So in this moment, Lord, in this time that you have orchestrated for us to come together as a body of believers and remember that you are a God of our, we take this moment and we repent. Please forgive us for our many sins and the times that we live in the flesh, the times that we choose our own way, the times that we choose to walk our own path. We renounce the enemy and he is not allowed to work and manifest in our lives. We receive your forgiveness and we return to your path. We commit our lives to you. We roll our lives onto your path and we trust and believe in your promises. Help us today to remember as we take the bread and the cup that we are redeemed, that we are renewed, that we are loved. And we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus, who saves. Amen. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. This is my blood, poured out as an offering for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We're going to close out our time with worship this morning. I just pray that you will allow the Holy Spirit to just soak in uh, today's sermon, what he wanted to say to you, the idea that God is a God of renewal and redemption and restoration and that he wants to do a new work in you. This was an opportunity for us to allow him to speak to our hearts, to remember what he did for us on the cross as we continue to take these next steps forward on our journey. It is not going to be easy. It is going to be challenging, but God is faithful and God is true. And he promises that he will not forsake us and that he will continue to walk with us until the very end. Let us hold on to that. Let us let today be a revival in our spirits to renew our faith, to help us rejuvenate our joy, even though we're living in a challenging world. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.